Welcome back to the Thrift Store Rundown, do a Disney on a budget. If you are or ain't no hunchback girl or hunchback guy, yet you somehow own copies of this iteration of Disney Magazine from the mid-90s, let me bring you into my yard and show you the summer 1996 premiere issue. By the time I get done with this, you'll probably be like, it's better than mine, and there's good reason for that. First off, price. This was delivered to a Judy Yaki of Anaheim, California, which coincidentally is where Disneyland is located, for $2.95. Under three bucks for a magazine like this? Imagine that price today. Disney Magazine would probably go out of business. Oh wait, they already have. For this version, anyway. Consider this. I went ahead and purchased this back in January of this year for 25% off 99 cents from my place of magic, Unique Thrift Store in Patterson, New Jersey. That's pocket change for something like this, folks. Pocket change. Equally impressive, the features contained herein. Going behind the scenes of an Oscar-nominated animated classic, The Hunchback of Notre Dame with a free pull-out poster. A personalized resort guide to Walt Disney World. Where should we stay, depending on some funny scenarios that might happen to take place, and of course, your love of Disney. This is a checklist-based personalized guide to stay at the happiest place on Earth. A special article celebrating 70 years of Winnie the Pooh, and a few other special noteworthy features that I'm about to highlight in here. And by the way, this isn't the premiere issue in the sense that this was the first iteration of Disney Magazine, the first issue in this particular iteration. Nevertheless, it's still pretty awesomely magical in its own right, and I'm not going to waste a minute more. So let's get started with a mini ad, if you will. This is not the pull-out poster, folks. That'll come later. But I like this better than that. Because I'm a sucker for these type of one-page mini poster advertisements for any movie, Disney otherwise. The Hunchback of Notre Dame. Join the party June 21st, 1996. From Walt Disney Pictures. Pretty sweet. Oh, by the way, the section here, the Disney Files. We have here Q&A with some Disney trivia and Disney fans saying the real-life Disney experiences. Whether watching uh, Walt Disney Pictures on the big screen or the Disney Channel or going to Disney World, Disneyland, whatever. And this is not the Hunchback of Notre Dame poster either. Rather, it's an advertisement for the Disney Store's theatrical showing of the Hunchback of Notre Dame. And it went a little something like this. The Disney Store offers you an opportunity to be one of the first to see the Hunchback of Notre Dame. A special offer to buy theater tickets for an exclusive 8.30 a.m. morning screening on the opening weekend. Ticket price of 6 bucks per admission, child and adult, with a specially created lithograph of the main characters from Walt Disney Pictures' 34th animated feature. Nominated for Best Original Score. Tickets are available only at participating locations of the Disney Store in the United States. Information about the locations in each city is available at the Disney Store. Special 8.30 a.m. sold time on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday morning, June 21st through the 23rd, 96. Ticket sales begin Saturday, May 25th. Qualities limited. So, it's an exclusive offer for a special screening sponsored by the Disney Store for the Hunchback of Notre Dame. Now we move on to another one-page mini-ad. This is for Homeward Bound 2, Lost in San Francisco. Your favorite talking animals are back in a new movie on video. Yes to own July 31st. I'm a sucker for these stage because of the artwork and technically because of the credit billing on the bottom. Oh yeah, that ropes me in every time. I'm such a technical geek. Waited G, close captioned. This is a special section here where three longtime Disney fans Pay a week-long visit to the Disney Institute at Walt Disney World to shop it up on their Disney knowledge for bettering their social interaction or bettering themselves. For this guy, Disney just might become the ultimate aphrodisiac. His name is Paul Keegan. He figures it can't hurt his chances with the ladies if he takes a few classes in cooking, romance, jazz, and body sculpting. In fact, he decides to sign up at the Disney Institute for the full week. The single guy chronicles his story. Just bake it. You can steal a woman's heart, the author finds, with flatbread and apple pie. Coincidentally, preparing the rest of the romantic dinner's menu isn't the most difficult part. What's toughest is figuring out how to not look tragic sitting alone at the candlelit tables they've set up. 
So in other words, Paul is a work in progress. But as long as you keep that Disney magic inside you, Paul, your wishes, whether you wish upon a star or not, will come true. They got to. I mean, you're at the Disney Institute. Otherwise, you should get your money back. <laughs> Alright. Here is Saturday night at the movies. Carrying on a television tradition, John Morrison and Pippin Ross will put on Walt Disney Television's attempt to revamp the magical world of Disney, then known at the time as the wonderful world of Disney, to air Saturday nights at 8 on ABC. Original Disney Saturday night movies, plus special broadcasts of animated features and live action features, so on. This was revitalized as the wonderful world of Disney back in 96 and had a good year-long run as that particular iteration. We also have Tessie and Nostalgia Closet. So some wonderful world of Disney related questions here, about 10 of them, including the 9 lives of Disney's movie of the week. Various iterations, variations, name changes, so on. Going from Disneyland in 54, all the way down to the unofficial title of Disney's Saturday Night Movie franchise, wisely renamed from that time twister, without being a time twister, as the Wonderful World of Disney. Hence why I'm calling this series the Wonderful World of Disney Deals. And now the main event, for most of you anyway. Jodifer, Jodie Animation, The Hunchback of Notre Dame. A harrowing tale of how producer Don Hahn, directors Kirk Rice and Gary Trousdale, and a cast of hundreds transformed the gothic French novel into the latest Disney classic. Again, nominated for Alan Makin's original score, alongside Stephen Schwartz. Together they wrote the songs. This is one of the rare instances where Alan Makin, Disney's resident musical Star Wars, failed to win an Academy Award. I don't get why. I like the Hunchback of Notre Dame score. And uh, the main title song. Beginning and reprise. My goodness. David Ogden Steers. Hitting a note that high? That's scary. It's like bone chilling. Yet in a really positive way. This, by the way, is the fold out poster. I don't want to damage it though. Art created by Justin Bradstater and used in the development of Disney's animated version of The Hunchback of Notre Dame. It illustrates Victor Hugo's vision of Paris. Heaven above, the city streets as hell below, and the cathedral of Notre Dame, Quasimodo's sanctuary and prison in between. A part of Disney Magazine's Summer Collectibles. You want to take this out if you own this copy? Go ahead, I'm just going to leave it in. And by all accounts, this is an in-depth, behind-the-scenes look at the 34th animated feature film. Including a timeline of production. From conception, dating all the way back to Victor Hugo's creation in 1828, to here, complete the animation, recording the Oscar nominated score with a 120 voice London choir. Awesome. Going all the way down here to June 21st, 96, when the Hunchback of Notre Dame would open in the US and Canada. Within the year, it would open worldwide. And once again, remind us all why the Disney Renaissance truly was in the 90s. We have here the stars of Notre Dame giving voice to the drawings. Tom Hulse as Quasimodo, Tony Jay as Flo, Kevin Clyde as Phoebus, Jason Alexander, Mary Ricks, Charles Kimbo, and uh, Demi Moore as Esmeralda. Oh yes, fine, fine choice. Even in the 60s, now, Demi Moore is just super, super, super sexy. She was picked to be Esmeralda because of her sultry, smoky voice and her sense of humor. Hey. This just might be one of the most ultimate, wholesome aphrodisiacs for almost all of you. Moving on. This is Cliff Plow Unplugged. The California Grill's award-winning chef gives up his favorite recipes, as told to Kevin Markey, and now passed on to you, with the signature that said the California Grill being this. Grilled pork tenderloin with polenta and balsamic smothered mushrooms. And that's not all. This is actually an entire menu of recipes in here. Da da say Cliff from the California Grill. Cliff's lemonade, spiced olives, parmesan pita points, Asian coleslaw, grilled yellowfin tuna with cilantro, lime yogurt sauce, and a poppy seed angel food cake with straw strawberry rhubarb topping espresso. All the recipes can be found here in this page. That would be page 76. 
That is his favorite at home menu, by the way. With the tuna grilled ware. Some more recipes can be found on page number 78. With that heavenly lemon poppy seed angel food cake with strawberry rhubarb sauce accompanied by espresso with a twist. Are you salivating for this yet? Because this is a pretty sweet issue. On to the big picture. We're going behind the scenes of Walt Disney Television Animation's Renaissance. The cartoon revolution will be televised. Tuning in to the following. Let's see. Gargoyles, The Goliath Chronicles, Mighty Ducks, Crack Pack, Brand Spanking New Doug, Jungle Cubs, and Boo to You Too, Winnie the Pooh. On ABC, CBS, National Syndication, and on the Disney Channel, all from Walt Disney Television Animation. Back then, it wasn't known as Walt Disney Television Animation exactly. That would happen in the early 2000s, but we're going behind the scenes of some of their new television productions. Plus, a new Walt Disney Fitzes movie called Kazam with Whoopi Goldberg and Shaquille O'Neal. Now, that's one film in Disney's live action renaissance that few people would want to remember, plus Mighty Ducks 3. D3, the Mighty Ducks. Oh well. And here's a behind the scenes article for. James and the Giant Peach, World Dolls Classic, Henry Sullivan's Adopted Baby, Oscar nominated, and well, it's now one of our favorite Disney Renaissance films too. There you go. So what more can I say about this? I mean, this is as Disney as Disney gets, and for all you 90s geeks out there, it really doesn't get much better than that. I mean, I could scroll through this at random and show you more features, but... I think you've seen quite enough. I know I've seen quite enough for me to know that I have to buy more of these issues. Up until now, the only other Disney magazine that I reviewed and bought was, I guess, from the uh, late 80s, early 90s or something. I'll have to check that out and link it below. But of course, uh, you can see that in the Disney Deals playlist, which houses all the Disney content. Let me go ahead and get my... Uh, Doctor's Note Sensei here. Yeah, a little bit, well, <laughs> fancy ghetto, I should say. But all in all, this gets five out of five claps. Hotel Transylvania, darn you for coming up with this joke before me, but this fits hand in glove. Baby got hunched back, and now you got what you need to get this and include it in your Disney library. It's no darn joke. Thanks for watching. We're on to Hannah Montana's Backstage Pass to close out this week. See you then, and remember, dreams do come true on the flip side. Congrats on your engagement, but aren't you a little too old to be woman hopping? 